In this fourth and final video of our building creation series, we're going to go ahead and finish this office building to the point where we can export it as a data file, a GB XML file, which we can then in our next series of videos upload into Green Building Studio and do some analysis of it. So I'm going to spin this thing around and look at it just a little bit. Um, and we're looking good. We've got walls on all four sides. Uh, I know that we've got some floors and some roofs. Uh, what we need to um, finish this thing up is going to be some fenestration. So we need some windows and doors and things like that, which will actually give us something to analyze when it comes to heat gain and heat loss and things like that. It's easiest to place windows and doors if we're in a floor plan view. So I'm going to go to the level one plan. So just over my project browser, double click on level one, and I'm going to place some windows. Um, here we go. So on our home tab, we've got a window command. So I'm just going to click on window and hit the save. There we go. We have an automatic save feature. So it's a fixed window, 36 by 48. And I'm going to come down across this south face of my building here, and I'm going to put in a bunch of those guys and just kind of keep clicking at random and it's not going to be pretty but you get the idea we've got a lot of windows across the bottom there I'm going to put some across the west as well and across the east now there are some shortcuts um, I want to make this look a little bit prettier so um, let me show you a couple of shortcuts real quick and I'm going to do this by working with dimensions. And so I'm going to zoom out a little bit and recenter this. And I want to place a dimension line, and that's going to let me uh, equalize the spacing on all of these little guys. So up in my ribbon here, I click on Annotate. And then I click Aligned for my dimension line. And then in my um, references here, I'm going to use this pick drop down and instead of individual reference I'm going to use entire walls and then I'm going to click on options and I'm going to click on openings and I'm going to click OK and now I'm able to just click on that west wall once bring my dimension line out here to the west a little bit and click to place it and then notice in the middle of my dimension line here I've got this little EQ with a pink line through it click on that and now all of my windows are equally spaced. Do the same thing down here across the south. Click once. Bring out that dimension line. Click to place the dimension line. Click on top of the EQ with the pink line. And boom, now I've got equally spaced um, windows. Another quick tip is to allow Revit to find the center line of things for you. So when I'm hovering over a wall or something like that, it's going to pop up with a pink triangle when I'm over the middle. So I'm going to use the mirror command to place the same windows on my north and east elevations that I've already got on my west and my south elevations. So to do that, I'm going to click these guys and I hold down my control button on my keyboard to allow me to select multiple items. So I've selected the west windows I'm going to use this tool which is a mirror about a drawn axis and so it's going to want me to click the command and then out here I'm going to hover over this wall until I get that pink triangle see that it keeps popping up it tells me it's the midpoint of that, that wall so what it wants me to do is to draw the mirrored axis so I draw a little line down through there two clicks and boom there you go now I've got my windows on my east wall I'm going to do that same thing across the bottom here. I'm going to select all of these windows. And I'm going to mirror these about a drawn axis as well. So I hover over this exterior one. Well, maybe I hover over this one. Hmm, didn't like that. waiting for it to give me that little pink triangle but I've got a window right there and I don't think it's liking that. So I'm going to mirror it about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven. aha! So the middle of that window would be the middle of the wall as well. So I just draw that there 
and now I've got my windows across the north wall. So now I've got windows everywhere. I'm going to go and look at this in 3D just to see what it looks like. And so now I've got windows all the way around my building. One more shortcut here. Hover over one of these windows. Uh, you've got a pre-select blue highlight there. So I'm hovering over one. I'm going to do a right click on my mouse. That flyout menu that I get there, I'm going to use this uh, select all instances and then the flyout to the right of that is entire project. Go ahead and click on entire project. And so now I've got all of those windows selected. And now remember that tool that we used, the copy to clipboard tool. It's up here on this ribbon. It says copy to clipboard, so I click on that. And now I'm going to use the paste align to selected levels. So I click on that drop down underneath paste, paste aligned to selected levels and I've already got them on one so I want them on two and three and click OK and boom there you go now I've got windows I can just click someplace in the white to deselect so now I've got windows all the way around this guy pretty cool huh so very quickly I have a building that is just full of fenestration I'm gonna go back to the first floor and take out a couple of windows and put in a couple of doors so I double click on my first floor plan and I'm gonna take out um, I guess this one so I just click on it to select it I click the uh, delete button I go to my home tab up here and I click on door and let's see if I've got any exterior doors already loaded in here. No, I don't. Uh, so I'm going to pretend that this is an exterior door. And we'll just stick it in that corner down there. Click Modify just to get out of that. Okay, so I have one more task that I have to do before I can export this guy. Uh, and that is to uh, place rooms within my structure. And so I'm going to do that in a floor plan view for each one of the floors. So I'm going to go over here into my project browser and double click on level one. And I've got this um, area that is just one big room. Uh, if this were an actual office building, I would probably have multiple rooms and some interior rooms, some exterior uh, facing rooms, all sorts of stuff going on. It would be very complex. But just to get this thing to analyze in a basic way, we're just going to create one room up here. So I'm going to click on room. It's on my home ribbon. Click on room and then click to place that room. And there you go. That's all you have to do on that level. Go to level two. Click on room. Click to place it. Same with level three. Click on room and click to place it. So now we've got three spaces that Revit's going to recognize when it exports as a GBXML file. So next up is to actually do that export. So I go up to the purple program button, the R button, click the drop down there, and go all the way down to export, which is about halfway down that menu. Hover over export for a second. I get that pop-up menu to the right slide out and select GB XML file. Click on that. Now I've got um, room volumes not computed. You have chosen to compute all only areas in the computer. Da, 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 da. And so I'm going to say yes to this uh, very long dialog box. And that's okay. Um, so we've got some settings here that we need to adjust. And the first time uh, that we do this we have to always set these things. Uh, when we go back we shouldn't have to set them again because we're going to say save settings here in a minute. So uh, building type is an office. Uh, that's fine. If I click that drop down there uh, there's a bunch of other stuff that it could be as sort of standard things um, and that establishes things like hours of operation and um, heating loads and cooling loads and stuff like that. But I'm going to leave this one as office. My location is set to default and default in Revit, remember, is Boston, Massachusetts. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to change this to Dayton, Ohio. So I click my three little dots there to get into a selector. And this time, rather than dragging uh, this symbol all the way across the country, I'm going to type in my project address, which is going to be Sinclair's main location, which is 444 West 3rd Street, Dayton, Ohio. 
and I'm going to click search and there it is I'm happy with that Sinclair Community College it even popped that in for me I'm going to click OK and so now that has has changed in that window uh, ground plane is on level one that's fine we can be more precise if we want to but we're not going to be uh, project phase I'm going to click this and get a drop down there and change that project phase to new construction this is a new project for us and notice what happened in my preview window over here now I can see those three spaces that I created those three rooms one on each level uh, are now showing up in my model here and I can click save settings or I can click next I'm gonna go ahead and click next so now it's asking me where I want to save this GBXML file and so whatever makes sense to you this is the folder that I've got set up for this particular project for the Warren County STEM Institute so I'm gonna call this uh, office building test one one and click on save and it chugged for a minute there and did lots of stuff I'm gonna now gonna minimize Revit I just want to see that it's actually there so I'm gonna click on my my start menu my documents go into Warren County stem and Revit for stem and there it is that's the file that I'm looking for uh, office building test one it's an XML file that's exactly what I wanted so I know that I've got it now so we've made our export life is good in our next video we will import that into green building studio and run a quick analysis of it